Ladies and gentlemen, ISF President Vlad Marinescu, ISF Vice President Yang Man Kim, General Secretary Boban Totovsky, Director of Game Content Industry Division at the Korean Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, Chang Yang Ga, Director General of the Culture and Sports Bureau of the Busan Metropolitan City, Mr. Kim Ki Hun, and Chairperson of BIPA, Lee In Suk, honored guests, stakeholders, players, and attendees in Korea and all over the world. Thank you for joining the sixth Global Esports Executive Summit, broadcasted live from the Busan Esports Arena. I definitely wish I could be there, but I'm here in Israel at Kfar Maccabiya. My name is Ido Brosh. I'm a board member and director of global programs at the ISF. I'm also the president of the Israeli Esports Association. Today, I will talk with you about the importance of esports associations and federations in the global esports ecosystem. This begins with a short story. I have recently spent a few days in Vienna, the capital of Austria, great city. I was there as a guest of the Austrian Esports Federation. While visiting and getting to know some of the important work that ESVO, the Austrian Esports Federation, is doing in Austria, I also met a wonderful guy, a guy named Mr. Suleiman Zorba, a national council member in Austria. I recall that when we first launched Esports Europe, the European Esports Federation, it was met with mixed reactions. Some people applauded the move as a unifying move for esports in Europe and the region. Others, however, talked about non-profit associations and federations in esports being unnecessary or those guys from the traditional esports trying to take over esports, sorry, traditional sports trying to take esports and so on. I remember one particular comment stating, we don't need suits in esports, obviously referring to the political natures of associations, federations, uh, initiatives, or similar organizations. Suits like this. <laughs> Those particular pieces of critical feedback came from rather, sometimes from rather well-known personas in the esports space leading some of the most top-grossing esports companies and clubs in the world. Today, I will do my best to demonstrate why esports associations and federations are important since they promote peaceful, inclusive, collaborative ecosystem for all to participate in. Let's start with the obvious. People hate politics, right? Politics are viewed as uh, messy, often repulsive, sometimes corrupt business. But anyone who had studied even basic political science knows that politics are a means to an end. The evolution of human cultures from resolving differences through war, through conflict, through violence, to finding resolutions and agreements through compromise. And in today's world, we need to compromise to find agreements to get what we want. It is the case for the global industries, for the economy, for national and international interests, for sports, for culture, for basically every aspect of life. And it's also true for esports. Another aspect of politics is that it serves as a platform for multiple branches and industries to work together and to find consensus. For example, sport programs can interface with cultural programs and become more inclusive by introducing 
educational programs. A lot of big keywords, I know, but we'll dive into it. These collaboration models and opportunities manifest into reality through political activity. Governmental organizations and NGOs have not just the ability, but also the mission to enable beneficial programs even where it does not generate profit, since it allows inclusiveness or advances certain global human values or even simply enables those with fewer means to have the same opportunities. Today, with esports still being not recognized as an official sport or sporting activity in most European countries, many local esports communities with millions of members do not enjoy the same opportunities as the big esports markets. While we see the esports industry growing year after year, the revenues and subsequent investments are being made in the large esports economies of North America, Western Europe, and China, leaving many dedicated esports players, fans, and enthusiasts behind. The void left leaves thousands of small, local, regional, and national esports communities with millions of members, with very little to work with, and a significant disadvantage when it comes to opportunities to join the big international competitions, leagues, and events. If we look at gender, gender inclusiveness for, as a uh, one topic for discussion, we can see that women gamers are about 50% of the global gaming population today, but only about 15% of the global esports fan base, one five, 15%. And this is precisely where national and international esports federations come in. It's easy to showcase the success of esports in nations like Germany, China, South Korea, in uh, the United States. And with events like the League of Legends World Championships or the Dota 2, the International. But we must also consider within the esports community that most players cannot access any opportunity to be part of these big esports, uh, of the big esports ecosystem on the amateur or semi-professional levels. How many participants in those big events that I mentioned come from countries outside of East Asia, North America, and Europe? Very little. How many girls participated in those events? It's a round number, almost zero. A non-profit association or federation is the only type of organization that can help fill this gap and eliminate this sad reality. It's the only type of organization that can facilitate a successful long-term collaboration model with governments and enable grants to support the ecosystem. Not because it can provide money to create big international competitions. The esports organizer are doing organizers are doing a great job at that already. Not because it can create a uh, better platform to raise professional players and teams. It's obviously a benefit, but the esports clubs already have this covered. But because it can facilitate investment and programs to support the local, amateur, and semi-professional communities, they can grow and feed into the ecosystem. And if those big words or keywords are detached from reality for you, consider the following practical points instead. Youth educational programs, esports ethical standards, unified standards, uh, local physical clubs and meeting places, uh, parents and public education about esports benefits, small local level tournaments and competitions, just among other things that can be done. 
none of these things are likely to be worthy for any non-profit organization to invest in, since they will not generate any revenue from it. But an esports association and federations can do it, because it simply falls into their stated missions and objectives. They have more chances as a non-profit to finance projects like these through government support and grants, through game publisher and organizer support, through local donations, through membership fees, among other things. So, do we need associations in esports? Well, it's not a Robin Hood fantasy, right? We are not here to steal from the rich and give to the poor. Um, it really is simply all about creating a sustainable ecosystem. Sustainability means inclusivity. You don't have sustainability without inclusivity. And it is hard to deny that today, not many enjoy the success of global esports. While big clubs and teams can participate in multi-million dollar tournaments, small teams, local organizers, and amateur players need to rely on the goodwill of volunteers and local sponsors to get things done. And in this space, the government can help. There are programs dedicated to support and promote cultural or sporting activities in practically every nation and every community around the world. If esports is to become fully sustainable, we need to support our local, regional, and national communities. We need to have structures in place and those structures take the form of associations and federations that involve politics. These organizations are not there to replace anyone. They are simply there to facilitate a sustainable growth. That's all. But that's a lot. And that means more players for the games. That's good for developers, game developers and publishers, IP owners. That also means more fans, more fans, right? For, for clubs, for tournaments. That means more revenues for organizers and clubs and more eyeballs for sponsors and promoters. That also means more new talent for esports, players, broadcasters, coaches. That's great opportunities for players and clubs. And more required logistics and operation. That's great for the entire esports economy, like in any other sporting or cultural activity. To conclude, associations and federations are a natural part of any esports, but also a natural part of the esports world, as they help unify, grow, and facilitate programs for communities for all levels. The sooner collaboration between all the stakeholders in the esports industry will manifest and the investment in the amateur and small local communities will increase, the sooner esports will enjoy more explosive growth and, at some point, as we all know, take over as the world leading sporting and cultural activity of the 21st century. I hope you enjoyed this speech and thank you very much for your time.